Yahweh bless you. This is part two of the house built upon the rock, sand, and clouds. And we're going to be really talking about the clouds. Uh, so a summation is last week uh, we began in 2 Timothy 4, 3, and 4, which is, you want to repeat, you want to quote that? No. There will be a season when the healthful teachings they will not endure, but according to their own covenants will they heap unto them teachers, because they have itching ears, and turn from the truth they will turn their ear unto stories. So we find out uh, Bible translations are done to please the people, pastors, churches are there to please the people as a whole, so the people are motivating the, uh, with their itching ears, the covenants that they want. So, uh, and that's where the teachings, are, which are really many times what we're talking about the clouds, is teaching fantasies. It's really what they want to believe instead of what, what is actually true. Uh, inaccurate Bible translations, if they, it, it, uh, they are inaccurate because the people want them that way. They don't want truth. They don't want Yahweh in their word. And so really these teachings are for people who want truth. If you want the traditions of men, uh, this is not for you. If you want what Yahweh has to say, this is for you. So this is really based on confirmation bias also. Confirmation bias is what people want to believe. And uh, we saw that with Aharon, uh, that what, when they thought Moses were gone for 40 days, they wanted a molten calf, is what they want. They want, and, and, and so, and they had Aaron. Who did that? Not Aaron. The people with the itching ears and the coveting wanted a molten calf. The teacher became who? Aaron. They will heap up to them teachers because they have itching ears and turn from the truth. So these are, this is the long history of going on, on and on. So we're going to just continue on from uh, last week, but this one, we were with hell, how many people went to hell. <clears throat> and since they, they, they said it, it must be true. Now we're going to go to some exhibits of going to heaven stories. And you'll see this all the time, you know, is. Anybody who dies, they'll say, he's gone to be home with the Lord. He's gone home to be with the Lord. His homecoming, which is all a lie. People are asleep in Sheol until uh, the resurrection from among the dead. But here's some illustrations of testimonies. Excuse me. Uh, Carol Myers described butterflies and angelic soldiers. Angelic. Uh, you know, these, and they're always with a near-death experience. Died on the operating t table in car cracks. Uh, Meyer also alleged and saw a large angelic uh, soldier surrounded by millions of butterflies. So, uh, one thing we said last time too is uh, Galatians 1, 6 through 9 is, if anyone adds to this, his Yahweh's word, let him be accursed. And he said it twice, let anybody add. So these people are going to be accursed. Don Piper saw a magnificent gate. He was in a car crash. Standing at some magnificent gate surrounded by people I had known and loved in life. So obviously these people who died are in heaven. Uh, this other, uh, Julia... Uh, something uh, ran into ran into her grandmother in heaven. Uh, this is all on uh, uh, Google. You can just say people who went to heaven, and all these will come up. She told the 700 Club, <clears throat> "It was like I was home, and I wanted to stay there." My grandmother said, "She's in heaven." No, you can't come with us. You have to go back. Go back and be happy. Ten years later, she recovered enough to complete a triathlon. She was in an accident. Amazing, the apostles had no information on this. Mary Dio, she died. <coughs> she said she never felt more alive after drowning on a kayak trip in 1999. Uh, Orsta Peak surgeon Mary Neal reported she swam, swam up to heaven 
where she spent a good 30 minutes before her earthly body was resuscitated. Uh, uh, Colton Burtball, he's the one who, Heaven is for Real, they made a movie, I saw Rainbow Ho Hell, Rainbow yes. Horse, Heaven is for Real. He allegedly went to heaven and then returned with, not, and this is three years old, mm -hmm. <coughs> and his father's a pastor who wrote a book on this and they made millions of dollars. What are the odds? He allegedly went to heaven and then returned with knowledge of a great grandfather he never met and an unborn miscarried sister. He also saw Jesus riding a rainbow colored horse. And after he got older, my book, Heaven is for Real, you know, uh, I still remember my experience in heaven. Here is uh, Crystal McVeigh, went to heaven and learned to love herself. She then received the, the choice to stay in heaven or return to earth and her family. She chose the latter. So, we have plenty of testimonies of, well, uh, here's one other one. <coughs> Annabelle Bame sat on Gia's lap and had a movie made about her. At the age of nine, when she fell headfirst into a hollow cottonwood tree, and uh, she ended up getting healed by this, but she sat on Jesus' lap, and when Annabelle dropped some knowledge about her mom's two miscarriages, she knew her, her daughter had somehow visited the afterlife and wasn't simply suffering from a delusion. And that's a movie made, Miracles from Heaven. So, <clears throat> people want to believe that when you die, you're immediately in heaven, which means there's no purpose for Christ. Well, wait. <clears throat> there's no purpose for Christ. There's no purpose for resurrection. A judgment is done immediately when you die. You either go to heaven or hell, so there is no white throne judgment. Uh, there is no resurrection. So, we'll go to the next point now. And... Uh, I, I'm going to quote myself from last week. So I said people don't have an appetite or hungry. You know, they do are hungry and they do have an appetite. But they have an appetite for candy. For what? Candy. Cotton candy. Pop. <clears throat> so instead of the truth of Yahweh's word, they don't want to wait and be in shell a slave for a thousand years or a hundred years or five hundred years. They want to go to heaven right away. So give us a preacher who will tell us that and we'll come to your church. And so the preacher said, I'll tell you that. So he comes to the church and teaches that, which we will see. Um, and they always, we always remember, people want multiple gods. That's why Aaron with his gods, Jeroboam had his gods, two calves. And so they always want more than Yahweh. And so that's historically, and now we've got three gods, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now just to show you these translations, <coughs> are there to please men. We're going to look at so much of this. And, you know, going to heaven means there's something, you're, we know your body's not in heaven. Your body's right here on the operating table. It's been cremated. It's in the ground. So what's going to heaven? Okay, so we have to have soul or spirit, something that leaves our body that goes to heaven. So that, And that is, we're going to look at the word suke which is soul in Greek, which, are, which sometimes they're going to translate. So we're going to show you the ambiguity of what they do. But before I, I go there, let me go to... <clears throat> what teachers say the soul is. And then we're going to see actually how Yahweh uses it. And here is Kenneth Copeland. When you are born again, your spirit is instantly transformed into the image of God. Now you have to say, what chapter and verse are these? Your spirit is transformed into the image of God. There is no chapter and verse. Your soul, now listen to this, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. We're going to look at this, see what the Word says about this. No, no justification whatsoever on that. Your body is just your earth suit. So what they've got is, because people want to, that you are spirit, soul, and body, your three parts. It's interesting because in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, it talks about, you know, uh, 
Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is your Elohim, Yahweh is one. Thou hast therefore a hob, Yahweh, thy Elohim, with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul. Right there. Heart, mind, soul. There's no uh, spirit, soul, mind. I mean spirit, soul, body. So that's the whole man in uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 9. And we know there is no uh, separate part of man. It just means your whole being, you're supposed to love Yahweh. So when you ha there's, a, there's a teacher, a Kenneth Hagin, and he came from somebody else too, but uh, the soul to them is not what lives forever. The soul, I mean, what lives forever is spirit, and so they're going to say you're a spirit man. And so Kenneth Copeland is a, a disciple of Kenneth Hagin, and so is Joyce Myers and you got a multitude of people who are disciples of Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin said that we are spirit beings. No chapter and verse for that. And that's just, and what we're going to see, has nothing to do with the word spirit. And when they say the word soul, it has nothing to do with the word soul in this book. <clears throat> but Kenneth Hagin said, the soul includes the mind, the will, and the emotions, which has no bearing whatsoever on the word nephish, or suke. What is nephesh? Now that is the Hebrew word that they translate sometimes soul. Nephesh, as Genesis 1.20, which we will go into. Now, so they have went to the camp that spirit, we are spirit beings. Well, the Catholics go with the soul. And on their a website, the question of the reality of the soul and its distinction from the body is among the most important problems of philosophy for which is bound up by the doctrine of a future life. The soul may be defined as the ultimate internal principle by which we feel, think, feel, and will, by which our bodies are animated, and obviously going into immortality. Uh, but people have written books on spirit, soul, and body, and whole teachings, and Andrew Womack is also in that same camp. People want to believe this, that we're not in shell asleep. Anything to get away from that, and so they all use, I think that's 1 Thessalonians 5, how you grab your verse, and what we, we got to realize, the single verse doctrines that aren't apparent any other place, completely out of their context, that it is made. So spirit, soul, and body is used once in First Thessalonians. Uh, nobody else knew about this. And, it, and the context has nothing to do with what man is composed of. How about baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Only used once in Matthew. Nobody has ever baptized that. So everybody's got their verse. Their single verse, absent from the body, present with the Lord. That's in Second Corinthians 5. That's not, that's out of context, and that's not what the verse says, and that's nothing to do with leaving your body to go upon death. Uh, death is an enemy, it's not a friend, and that's a whole other teaching. But our teaching today is to talk about, um, uh, the, the, you know, the house is built in the clouds. So, but back to the soul. So we're going to actually see how it's actually used. Now, what they translate in the Greek text, soul sometimes is suke. And that's where we get psychiatry, the psychic. And let's go to John, and we're going to look at John chapter 10. On things that are in your word, and this is what your, the Rothram is the only Bible, or only word of Yahweh that you can actually rely upon without going to the text every time you're reading. Because the Bible translators are going to translate it suke, soul, when the people want to be translated soul, and when the people don't want to be translated soul, they're not going to translate it. They're going to translate it life. Same word. And we're going to see this in the same verses. So John chapter 10, uh, verse 11. Let me get here. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd, his soul, suke, laid down for a sheep. But we can't say he laid down his soul because the soul, you're trying to save your soul. So they're going to translate suke in that case, life. So watch how they do this. Verse 15. 
Just as the Father uh, uh, knoweth me, and I know the Father, and my soul I lay down for the sheep. That's suke. Verse 17. Therefore doth the Father love me, because I lay down my soul. And Rotherham is always going to note that. See the note on there, B? Soul. Suke. Now let me ask you, Kenneth Copeland said that's, that is the, uh, oh yeah. Soul means mind, will, and emotion. Is that anywhere in these verses? Not at all. It has no bearing whatsoever with this word suke or napish. They just made it out. Uh, that's 17. Let me see. Now we go to 24, verse 24. You're talking about what John chapter? chapter 10. All these things are going to be in the same chapter. I'm going to show you how they change according to what people want to hear. Verse 24, the Jews therefore surrounding him or saying unto him, How long holdest thou our souls in suspense? If thou art the Christ, tell us plainly. They're going to translate, they're going to translate those life, life, life. We'll go to Luke chapter 12. Just illustrations on how suke is used. Verse 19. 19, uh, 12, 19. And will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast many good things lying by for me, by taking my, thy rest, eat, drink, be merry, be making merry. You got the word soul there. That's suke. Verse 20. But Elohim said unto him, Simple one, on this very night, uh, they are asking thy soul from thee. It should, you know, in John they're translating the word life. Thy life from thee, but thy soul from thee. Uh, verse 22, And he said unto the disciples, For this cause I say unto you, uh, Be not anxious for the soul. They're going to change that now to life. Same word that they just translated soul before. And what you shall eat for your body, or what you shall put on. In verse 23, for the soul. There you go again. There you go. The soul is more than the food, and the body than the clothing. So they're jumping back from life and soul at their own discretion according to what the church teaches, and not according to what this book says. Nobody has any idea that's the exact same words. Mark, let's go to Mark chapter 8. Eight thirty-five. Okay, no, don't rush. Eight thirty-five. For whosoever will his own soul to save, shall lose it. Thirty-six. Wait a minute. Or no, thirty-five. But whosoever shall lose his soul for the sake of me and of the glad message shall save it. Thirty-six. For what does a profit a man to gain the whole world be made to forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in exchange for his soul? And so uh, Rotham will translate that life, but it's the same word. So soul, or suke, according to the way Yahweh uses, which is a reference to nephesh, has nothing to do with what the church teaches. Go to Matthew chapter 10. One other illustration. Twenty-eight. <coughs> excuse me. And be not fear. <coughs> excuse me. Be, and be not in fear by reason of them that are killing the body, and the soul are not able to kill. They didn't translate it life there. Thirty-nine, verse thirty-nine. And well, it's still you're still in twenty-eight. It's another one. Yeah. But fear, but fear rather than him was able to both soul and body to destroy and. The valley of Hanan, or the life and body to destroy in the valley of Hanan. 39. He that, he that hath found his soul, or that translated life here above, they translated soul. Same word. He that hath found his soul shall lose it, and he that lost his soul for my sake shall find it. 
Same chapter, same word, translated two different ways and to, to mislead. Chapter 16. And all it is is trying to validate the false teaching of what the church has come up with the word soul, which has nothing to do with the word suke. In the Greek language, in the Greek mythology, it has everything to do with it because according to the Greeks, the suke left the body. It's called the transmigration of the suke. Uh, but it has nothing to do with what Yahweh says. 16.25 uh, for whoever, whosoever intendeth his soul to save shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his soul for my sake shall find it. 26. For what shall a man be profited the whole world he gain, and his soul he forfeit for a man? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So as you can see, soul, the word suke, which is... Uh, the Greek word represent nephesh, and we know we've done this before on nephesh, uh, Genesis 1.20. Uh, they're not going to translate it soul. That's the first word of nephesh, first usage of nephesh. And uh, animals are living souls. And that's a whole other teaching all of a sudden. But we find out it has nothing to do with that man has a soul. He is a soul. Yeah, he is a living soul, but he's also a, there's also dead souls. And also, nephesh is in the blood. And so with Yahweh, you poured out the blood. Can you please stop that? It's distracting. The, when, the nephesh is in the blood, and so when you kill somebody, obviously the nephesh was poured out, the blood. Okay? So it has nothing to do with a dead nephesh, a live nephesh. Okay, now we've got, we're into that. Oh, I guess we go through nephesh. I did, I did have that down. Nephesh is a uh, Hebrew word 5315, Strong's number. Uh, let's just go to Genesis 120. Actually, what's is interesting, the Geneva Bible translated this first usage as soul. Geneva Bible what? Translated nephesh, the first usage of nephesh, which is Genesis 1.20, as soul. Geneva Bible is down in the 1500s. And Elohim said, let the waters swarm with an abundance of living soul. Nephesh. Nephesh. And birds shall fly over the earth, lowering the face over the face of the expanse of the heavens. That is nephesh. Does that have anything to do with the mind, the will that these other guys are talking about? You're just making this stuff up. And this is this these are houses built in the clouds. They just made it up. As a, as a doctor and speak with such authority. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Kenneth Copeland. Not according to this book. Yeah, but, you, but when they were, oh, well, Kenneth Copeland said that, or Kenneth Hagen said that, or Joyce Meyer said that, or Andrew Womack said that. It's just all rubbish. It's, they are the teachers, the people who have the itching ears. They come to you. Now, they can do some good things. But also, they can do some very bad things, as we'll see. Verse 21, Nephesh. And Elohim created the great sea monsters and every living soul that moveth. Uh, 24, And Elohim said, Let the hand, uh, land bring forth living soul. Only Rotham is only going to do this. In 30, All the uses of soul. And, and to every living thing of the land, to, to every bird of the heavens, to everything that moves on the land, where is a living soul? And if soul was life, you wouldn't have to put the word living in front of it. Nephesh was life because there are also dead nephishes. It's and a dead nephesh. It's a dead soul or dead, dead person. Okay. Yeah, it would be a dead person. But that's how it's used as. 
And we know in 2.7, they used to translate this, and man became a living nephish, and they all came James, and now everybody has changed that because the translations people want to a living person, to a living being, and it's the word nephish, and you, have no, you would have no idea that's the word that is translated soul because it's all hidden by the translations. And why are the translations? They are there to please the people. And uh, I'll just tell you the rest of the places to go. Uh, two, chapter 2, we're not going to go there. Two, chapter 2, verse 19. Chapter 9, verse 4. Verse 5, verse 10, verse 12, verse 15, verse 16. Now we're going to get into Ruach. The Ruach is what they're going to say spirit. These are clouds also. The word spirit, which we've said before, is a Latin word which means what? Spirit. Uh, breath. Uh, breath. Yeah. This means breath. Spirit is breath. To now we've got a whole, we got a, we got, we got, you know, that's what the word spirit means. That's not necessarily what ruach means. Uh, but now we've got a whole different meanings of the word spirit. And it is some thing that floats around, and, and you can see Yahweh using that with an in, unclean ruach. What? Demon are called unclean, unclean. ruachs. Ministers sometimes, or uh, messengers and, and, and revelations. I think it's the only place in the revelations. They are called the seven spirits or the seven ruachs. Now, let's just see how it's actually used. And uh, Ruach is uh, number 7307 from Ruach, really the verb. Remember, the, the nouns always come from the verb. And the verb is 7306, which means smell or scent. So just remember the word Ruach comes from the verb that means to smell or scent. And this first usage is, is in 8. 21, where, where Noah, we don't have to go there, but Noah built an altar and offered animals after the flood, and it was a, a fragrant scent. So, uh, okay, exercise C. So, what we're going to do is the usages in Genesis of Ruach. And so I'm just going to put Ruach instead of Spirit. So if you want to know what Ruach, how Yahweh uses Ruach, and not how man uses Ruach, Spirit, Soul, and Body, you know, they're all wrong in that particular area. So it's Genesis 1, 2. Now the earth had become waste and wild, and darkness was on the face of the roaring deep, but the Ruach of Elohim was brooding on the face of the waters. 3, 8. Of, this is all Genesis. Then heard they the sound of Yahweh Elohim walking to and fro in the garden at the Ruach of the day. Genesis 6 3. And Yahweh said, My Ruach shall not rule in man to times age abiding, for that he also is flesh. Genesis 6 17. Remember these are the floods. And I behold me bringing in the flood even waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Wherein is the Ruach of life from under the heavens? Genesis 7, 15. So they entered into the Noah, unto the ark, two and two of flesh, whereon was the Ruach of life. So animals had the Ruach of life. Well, animals don't have spirit. Well, they have Ruach of life. That's how Yahweh uses it. 7.22. Everything who's going to die, all whose nostrils was the breath of the Ruach of life, of all that were on the dry ground, died. Ruach of life. 8 1. And, and Elohim remembered Noah and all the wild beasts and all the tame beasts that were in the ark. And Elohim called it a Ruach to pass over the earth. That's the word. What? Breath. What? Spirit. Wind. Wind. Listen. And Yahweh caused a wind, and that's going to translate it wind. You don't know it's the word ruach. And, and, Yahweh, and Elohim caused a ruach to pass over the earth, and the water subsided. Uh, 
let me see here, uh, Genesis 26, 35. And they became a bitterness of Ruach to Isaac and to Rebekah. And those are the women of Esau. He saw the bitterness of Ruach. 41.8, And it came to pass in the morning that his Ruach became restless, so he sent and called for all the sacred scribes of Egypt and all their wise men. And Pharaoh related. So it's used as his Ruach became restless. Uh, 4138, Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one, Joseph, a man in whom is the Ruach of Elohim? And uh, 4527, So they spake unto him all the words of Joseph, which he had spoken unto them. Then saw he the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, Jacob, and the Ruach of Jacob, their father, revived. So that's how that is actually used, Ruach not what the people today want to be. Like Jasper the Friendly Ghost? Yeah, and so, yeah, they've got it, uh, just even to realize that's breath, it just replace breath with the spirit. And so, man is, spirit, is breath, soul, and body. That's where it's spirit. We do know when he dies, his breath is gone. <clears throat> They've got man, everybody has got man as an immortal creature. Uh, actually an Elohim, a God. He has a beginning and but no end. And that's why you have to come up, once you come up with this concoction that man is a God, well he has to live someplace. <clears throat> the new earth, which is what our promise is, can't be the place because that's not here. And so when they die, that, it, it, with the new earth, it means I have to wait in Sheol until I'm resurrected to the new earth. Well, that's a time period. I don't want to wait that. So I've got to come up with a new place. So when I die, I don't go to the new earth because it doesn't exist yet. I go to heaven. And so that's why I create heaven and which obviously to everybody else looks just like the earth. Everybody's walking around, not on clouds, but you know, you got horses and animals and everything else. So you made up this, this uh, fairy tale place. Has nothing to do with Revelations chapter 4, and that explains uh, Yahweh surrounded by the 24 elders about the a cherubim saying, Holy, holy, holy. You want to know what's going on in heaven right now? It's not the people. It is, that's what's going on in heaven. And that's chapter, uh, Revelation chapter 4. But we know that man is a vapor. We know in Genesis, well, let's just go back to Genesis. Well, we're already in Genesis 3. You know, remember he said, man, you shall surely die if you eat of the tree. And, and the serpent says, you do not die, but you'll be like gods. And that's the same teaching today the Christian church teaches is the same demonic teaching, so, which is a, a, you know, a teaching of Satan. But after he did that, that Genesis 3.19 tells you the fate of all men. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread until thou, thou return, until thou, doesn't say your body, thou return to the ground, because thereof was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Isn't that interesting? If this teaching that people went to heaven when they died, this is where it should be. It should be, let's just do what man's saying right now. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread until, until thy body return to the ground, and your spirit return to heaven from which it came. Because thereof was thou taken, for thy, the, thy body was dust, thou art, but thy, and, and, and thy body shall return unto the ground, but thy spirit shall return unto heaven. That's the teaching of the church today. Yeah. Or your spirit or your soul return to heaven. So we see now, uh, actually Cain put Abel into where? Heaven. heaven. Well, that was very nice of him. 
And so you start seeing, once you know these concoctions, what kind of problems you've just caused, which are hideous. But let's go to, uh, I don't know if we even have to go there. This is so uh, redundant. We'll go to James 4.14. And I'll give you the rest of them. What does the scripture say? Man's a spirit? No, man's a vapor. Man's a vapor. Did you say four, Genesis 4.14? Yeah, no, uh, James 4.14, sorry. Well, that doesn't fit well. <clears throat> Page 237. You want to read that, Wendy? I'm not there yet. I'll read it. Go ahead. Read it. Men who are, who are not versed in the morrow of what sort of your life will be, for ye are a vapor, for a little appearing, then just disappearing. Here we go. Vapor. A vapor. And it's all the way through the scripture. I'm going to give the people to go check it out. Well, let's go to... Um, one, one deal in the Old Covenant, Psalms 39, 5, and then I'll give you the rest of it. It's all the way through Psalms. And everybody knew that. You sleep, you sleep, you sleep. Thirty-nine, verse five. Lo, as hand breath has not granted my days, and my lifetime is as nothing before thee. Surely a mere breath are all men, even such as stand firm. How about verse? Uh, let me see here. Eleven. When by rebuke, when by for iniquity thou hast corrected a man. Then hast thou consumed as a moth all that was delightful within him. Surely a breath are all men. <sighs> Vapors. The rest of the places you can check it out is Psalms 78, 39, uh, 103, 15 through 16, 90, 1 through 6, Psalms 144, 4, 146, 3 to 4. Let's, let's finish one with First Chronicles tw uh, 29. David saying this. Let's start at 14. And yet, who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer willingly like this? From thee is the whole out of thy own hand have we given unto thee. For sojourners are we before thee, and strangers like our fathers. Like a shadow are our days upon the earth, and there is no hope. That is man. That's happy. Yeah, well, it, it, it's simple. And this is why we need a Savior, and this is why we need um, a resurrection. That why Christ was the first born from among the dead. He was the only one that, that, that was raised never to die again. Summation, this is not called the Book of Life. It is called the Book of Life, not the Book of Heaven. If you're written in the book of life, you're going to live. If you're not written in the book of life, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. The second death is not the book of hell. The other one is not the book of heaven. It, something that's very simple. In Psalms 37, it tells all about the, the, the people, the good people and the bad people where the good people are going to go and where the bad people are going to go. And heaven and hell are never mentioned in this book. It doesn't exist. The new earth is in this book. And the word destroy, perish. Let's just go back to uh, John 3.16. Uh, here's what the church teaches. For Jesus so unconditionally loved the world 
that he gave his eternally begotten self, that whosoever believeth in him shall not spend everlasting life in hell, but shall spend everlasting life in heaven. John 3.16, New Living, Living Version. Just made that up. You don't want the dead version. <laughs> That's what is taught. That's what people believe. But it doesn't say that. It says, for Yahweh, so hob the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not, what? Perish. Perish, not go to hell. Perish. Apolumai, but shall have life, age of body, not go to heaven. It had been gone to hell, gone to heaven. No, it said perish, life, age of body. But according to the doctors of man, everybody has life, age of body because they're immortal spirit beings. Hogwash. Okay, then I'll go ahead and, and uh, give a prophecy and that will be ending our session. But Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, your word of just direction. We know that the masses don't want it. Uh, people with itching ears don't want it. Uh, but we want it. And we'll give it to the people who do want it also according to what your word says and not what the, the men say. So we thank you for these words according to 1 Corinthians 14, a prophecy. Be bold, for, uh, for my son was courageous and I expect you to be also courageous. To stand up firm as adults taking this, you know, the stones that can be thrown at you, but standing up, as my son said, to speak the truth regardless of who is threatening you, because I will reward you for all of your behaviors that are done righteously. Amen. See you next week. Hallelujah.